Hey crew, we're going to be doing an assembly of an arbor press. Uh, side note, arbor press is kind of this little device that we often have in a shop that lets you take leverage and um, create thousands of pounds of force at this area to help assemble or disassemble things, which is pretty impressive because usually this little device here is only 18 to 24 inches tall and to create that kind of force it's just pretty cool that it can do that. So. Uh, it's just a random part. Uh, the reason I like it, it has a good combination of holes, uh, surface to surface constraints, a little bit of uh, motion that we can get into, and even some bolts that hold things together. So a good variety of really very common things that we do with assemblies. So with that getting started, you should be looking in the group drive under Genota Course CAD. There's a folder right there, ArborPress 2017.1. Make a copy of this folder and then take it into your class folder and paste it in your name assembly folder. Okay, so you're going to make a copy, take it to your folder, paste it. All the parts are going to be in here. In fact, there's even a few other odds and ends from when I made the assignment, but all you guys are going to be doing is using all the parts. This is just purely a demo assembly at this point. Um, so feel free to use that. Okay, so make a copy, get it in your folder, and then come back to this when you're ready. I will then close this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to start a new file. And we are looking at starting a new IAM file. And here's our assemblies, your IAM files. Standard, inches, millimeters, welding, and welding. Um, don't use this very often, kind of more of my advanced classes, but in this one we want standard inches IAM, so go ahead and double click that, or single click and create. And here is our blank workspace environment. This is where we're going to build our parts. And really just jumping into this, the first thing we want to do is place a part then up here in the top left corner, grab the place tool, It's loading. Just give me a minute. I'm just navigating to where my I have a folder on my local laptop. You guys should be going to the group drive, Genota, CAD, so on and so on. Your folder where you just made that copy and be getting your parts. Desktop. Let's see where did I just put that? There we go. Arbor Press. Here's all my parts. And once you navigate to this once, it should remember where you were. Side note is that as you build all your other assembly projects for me, make sure you have folders that you organize all your parts in and don't move them or rename them when you start this part of the build. If you do, you'll have problems and you'll probably want to give me a holler to come over and give you a hand to help rebuild uh, links they're called that might get messed up. So anyway, sorry. Go to your folder. Uh, most parts, most uh, objects I should say, or assemblies, uh, have a kind of a logical area to start. In this case, I think it was that base. So I'm going to grab that base part, open it up, zoom out a little bit, and you'll see I'm looking straight at it, but I'm just going to go ahead and left click one time. It changes, and I don't need any more copies of this, so I can either right click and cancel or just hit escape, and it shuts off the placing tool. And there we go. There's our first part. You're going to start to see a little history, kind of like when you make parts. There's a history of what happens to make a part. Well, in this case, we're going to have a history of how we bring things in, and we can go back to these things to modify later if needed. Uh, one thing we want to do is right-click on our first part and select Grounded, right down there, Grounded. And what that does is it kind of, you'll see a little pin symbol, and it locked that part in space. And it just makes assembly so much easier if you kind of have one stationary object versus everything trying to float around loosely. Uh, it, it just works a lot better. So usually you ground that first part that comes in. Again, you get a little pin symbol on either the part or the symbol in the browser. You know it's grounded, and things will work a lot better there. All right, next. I am going to go a little bit out of order here. I want to do the column second. So let's go ahead and place again. And there's our column number 13. Double click on that, bring it in. It's going to set it over here to the side. Left click one time, escape after that because I only need one copy. Um, it brings the column in. You notice the column's kind of 90 degrees to where it needs to go. 
if I would just start constraining this, which is a big word we're going to use a lot here, if there's a constraint tool, um, there's a 50-50 chance the column will turn the way we need it to by the computer. So I'm just going to help the computer out a little bit. If I left click on the part one time, press G on the keyboard once, it brings up 3D Rotate for just a single part, not the whole environment or not the whole world. And what I can do there is I can just get this part even just kind of close to the way it'll end up. This will help the computer a lot. Then escape when I'm done rotating. There we go. As I was just saying, that word constraint, just like when we learned to draw, we learned that constraint was a fancy word for rules. And we're going to be using that word constraint again because we're going to be putting all kinds of rules on our parts and how they go together and how they need to relate to one another. So with that, I'm going to jump in here, constraints. And we have several constraints. There's a mate constraint that has uh, mate again and then flush, which surface to surface contacts or surfaces being flush. This we use like three quarters of the time. Okay. Then we use angle constraints a little bit and tangent constraints a little bit. And then these rarely in my class because we're kind of a beginning level class. Uh, motion constraints, we'll use these also a very little bit, and then that's really it. So, mate of some type solution here, a lot, a little bit of angle constraints, a little bit of tangent, and once in a while some motion. Um, that's really it. Constraints are very, actually, very, very basic. Uh, it's baby steps of how you put things together. So. For example, a block, you know, often would be surface to surface. Um, now this part, when I think about the column going together, the first thing I realize is, hey, there's a hole in both of these parts, and I need that those holes to line up so a bolt can go in there later on. So even though this preview shows all blocky objects, the other reason we use make constraints a lot is because of center lines of holes, or center lines of cylindrical objects. So in this case, I'm going to zoom in here. I need the center line of this hole. doesn't matter if it's the bigger or the smaller part. Just be very careful not to get that center dot. Uh, we never use the center dot. Okay, always center lines. So I'm going to left click once when I get that preview. Zoom out. Rotate the world here a little bit. Zoom in. Again, not the dot. Make sure you get the center line. Left click again. And it puts those together. Apply and cancel because what I need to do is drag this back apart a little bit and there we go I'm gonna do a little bit of rotate as well yep. okay so I got that drug back apart a little bit so I can then think about the next step of how this would go together <clears throat> so once it's oh, the centers are aligned it would keep sliding together until what hits will well, be that inside surface there with the back of that so Let's grab that constraint tool, just a plain old mate, mate constraint, that surface. Let's try that button, there we go, to that surface. Apply. Cancel for the moment so I can show you something. Is that we're really close, but we can still do this with our part. And yep, it's fun. Everybody likes to spin stuff in here. Go ahead and get it out of your system. Even I still have to do it once in a while. Um, I just got to think about how am I going to hold this thing perfectly straight and a real easy way to actually do this is to go constraint we're going to jump to an angle constraint I'm going to say the side of this part the side of the base should be zero degrees or which means parallel but granted it's not yet it's still kind of at an angle so if I just try a different solution there we go I saw it move a little bit it has now applied that zero zero degrees and we can apply it cancel and that is now fully locked down you can see a little no move or no symbol which means there's no degrees of freedom left now left in this part it cannot rotate rock slide or do anything else it's locked down essentially grounded with this base now and that's a quick introduction to <clears throat> using different surfaces center lines and angles all to make this one thing locked in all right, let's put our table in. Place tool. Table, double click that. Kind of place it off to the side, escape, because I only need one of them. 
constraint and say the top of this base just mate mate constraint is what I'm working with here sorry the top of the base will touch the bottom of the table yep looks good apply cancel and apply cancel is common because usually you got to pull stuff kind of back apart to see your next set of selections now in this case once they're somewhat aligned surface to surface what would be the next thing well it'd be lining up the holes so I leave those apart so I can easily see them constraint again mate mate because we're gonna go center lines this time center line to center line careful not to get the dot center line to center line apply cancel and check it out the table can still rotate and that is a real feature on the arbor press because you actually select different size slots here for doing various assembly or disassembly looks good let's place another part this time we're going to grab the pin table pin set it up there escape click on it one time to highlight g on the keyboard one time rotate the pin so the chamfered end is down just even kind of close to how it goes chamfered end down is because that just what helps them start easier when you put them in the hole constraint center line of the pin center line of the hole <clears throat> sometimes you got to move your cursor around a little bit there we go apply now this is a case where my next set of clicks are easily seen so I don't have to shut this window off I can actually then just switch to flush and say the top of this pin is even with the top of the table apply cancel zoom back out rotate still perfect just rotate the whole environment or hit home on the 3d glass box looking good so far the other thing I can be looking at is if you're not sure how things are going together besides the video here you can have this document open on the other screen that kind of shows the relationship here of all the parts okay, so I can take a look at this and say um, you know what let's go ahead and put some of the gear and sleeves and handles and all that stuff back in and I'm gonna save save all the bolts for last I think so let's put that back on my other screen let's go place there's that gear. Now notice that file type's a little different. <clears throat> the file type is another assembly. So you can put assemblies in assemblies. And the only reason this is an assembly file is because there's a, a design a, a accelerator or kind of calculator, a tool that helps automate, automate gear creation. And I use that to generate this part. Um, so, but the idea that you can build smaller assemblies and put them into bigger assemblies is a, a very common thing. Um, we do that like in the Rube Goldberg class or SMB class and it works out slick. So then you, anyway, moving on, we'll skip that. So I'm going to get the gear, go ahead and place this escape because I only need one. <clears throat> this gear is going to go in that hole. So it's going to be a constraint center line to center line, center line center line apply cancel slide it back out you can see it's already starting to spin that's awesome what i got to think about next is how far in does that gear go now in this case it's going to go up against the side of that gear face so constrain because this little uh, stubby part here will fit through the hole so side of the gear is going to go up against the side of that surface right there that's slightly indented apply cancel perfect that part sticks out just a little bit the chamfer so that when you put the bolt on later it, it does have a little bit of wiggle room in real life side to side so it moves better looks good Hit home next place again let's get the sleeve there it is drop it on escape because I only need one constraint tool center line center line apply cancel drag it apart and rotate around if needed we need to see the hole in the sleeve obviously in the hole in the gear and we are going to constrain those two things together so carefully selecting the center line of the hole center line of this hole apply cancel 
now they spin together. Another way to do this would have been to turn work planes on. I just double click the part. I could go in the origin. You could turn on work planes that allow you to make work plane of the sleeve to work plane of the gear and then the two work planes could be forced to um, turn together too. So it's just another way to do cylindrical objects. You can go work plane to work plane to make it happen. And you'll shut that back off. Keep going with this one. We just happen to have holes going through both of them. If the holes didn't match up, by the way, you might have had issues constraining them. Uh, so that's something that accuracy comes into play sometimes during assembly. All right, so we got that sleeve on. Let's place another object. We need the handle. Place that off to the side. Escape, because I only need one. Now this time, I can just go ahead and constrain this. <clears throat> because I don't care if the computer flips it one way or the other. This is a part that has uh, identical ends. It doesn't matter which way it goes through. So center line of that handle, center line of this hole, apply, cancel, and there we go. Now, granted, it can come all the way out right now, so slide it so it's kind of in the middle. Good. And we're gonna go grab some, the next part, and this time we need the ball end. And we'd need two of them now. So I'm going to click one time up here and one time down there and then escape. First time we've dropped in two. But yeah, that's what's so handy here is that you only ever make one of each unique item and then just drop in as many as you need. Constraint tool. Move that to the side a little bit. The center line of this hole on the ball end. There it is. Goes on the center line of the handle. Apply, cancel so I can rotate this a little bit better. And then I just gotta think about how far down does this ball end cap go onto the handle? Well, it's gonna go until that surface touches the other surface on that the shoulder of that handle. So constrain, surface to surface on the mate. That little flat surface goes down until it hits this one. Apply, cancel. Let's try the other end. Rotate it back out of here. Let's see the the ball end cap is the wrong way, so I, I highlight it, one single click on it, then G on the keyboard, rotate that around so it's kind of close, escape, rotate the whole environment, ooh, that was a little bit off, so I click G one more time, let's rotate that, there we go, that looks better. Constraint tool, center line of that hole to center line of the handle, apply, and again, I can see my next set of selections, so I don't have to cancel. I can just say, same thing, make constraints that are already going. Make sure you get that preview of a arrow with like a cross on it, that surface. To that surface, apply, cancel. And F6, or home up on the keyboard, and there we go. Now, there's a few ways you can be rotating the whole environment. You can F4, that's how you can know I'm using F4 when you see that orbit and inside here is 3D orbit, outside is rotate. You can also shift and roller click, hold, sorry, roller click hold on the mouse. Um, there's kind of pros and cons, people get used to one, but at this point of the game, you should not be grabbing the glass box and rotating anymore. You should be using keyboard shortcuts to rotate because they're better, faster, and more accurate. Okay, the handle, it seems like it's pretty good, but the reality is it can go through the hole yet. So we should just probably lock this down to one spot so it's just a little easier to use. So what I'm going to do is constrain and go tangent constraint and say that this, this sleeve is going to have this ball end go up against it and it's just that tiny little bit of flat surface that's still out there that is tangent to that cylindrical surface and that looks good apply cancel f6 to go like that and i'm always also de i'm always clicking out in the workspace empty workspace to deselect things otherwise when you're accidentally on stuff you'll see they stay highlighted so i'm always de deselecting but now here we go. Oh yeah, that handle moves a lot better. The reality is actually we usually just grab the sleeve 
it's usually easier still just to grab and operate that sleeve right there. All right. <clears throat> Next. Let's get the gear that slides up and down. So place. The rack. Open. Just one of those. And how I know what's up or down on here is that the hole goes on the bottom. So highlight it, G on the keyboard. Just get it kind of close, hole facing down, teeth in towards the other gear. And what we're going to do on this is just simply say constrain that the side of this rack would go up against the side of this space in the column. Apply. And then I want the back of the rack flush with the little surface here. So switch over to flush this one to that one. Apply cancel. And there we go. That is locked into position. Don't worry that the teeth of the gear, the round gear, are going through the teeth of the straight line gear, the rack. That's something we'll take care of in another short video. Looks good. Okay, then we're ready for that cover plate. So place. Cover plate, just place it kind of out front, escape, constrain. Again, holes are a big thing here, so I'm going to get the center line of a hole, center line of a hole, apply, cancel, and then it's inside the part. So I grab it and drag it back out. Once I know the holes are aligned, actually I could do two holes, should work. Center line of this hole, center line of this hole apply then I can say mate constraint which is what it's still just default to is what center lines we're using this little surface or the back of the rack because these are all flush I guess I can just use the rack and that cover everything's touching apply cancel if I try to grab the cover can't move awesome and now I'm ready for bolts so place those uh, number 10 are the cap screws up there that hold that cover plate on. Double click that. And I need four of them once it loads. Anytime now. Yes. Interesting. 10. Sorry, I'm just looking down at my drawings to see if these are the same. Sometimes when I update my parts, they convert on me. Oh, come on now. Number 10 is a number 8 bolt. All right, let's go with that then. Yep, so that is correct. Sorry for the pause there. Just want to double check. And we need four of them. Escape. And I'm going to use G to get them all rotated just a little bit right direction. Notice you can just click from part to part once that oop, there we go. Once you kind of using the uh, part rotate tool you can just click on the next and escape when I'm finally all done. Constrain any bolt doesn't matter the order. Center line of the bolt, center line of the hole, apply and then what would the bolt hit as it tightens in? Well the bottom of the bolt bring that back over. There we go. The bottom part of the head of the bolt would go up against that surface. Apply, cancel. Now, technically, the bolt can still rotate in the hole. That's okay with me. Rarely do I care if the bolt can rotate in the hole. As long as the bolt is in position, that's what we're after here. So, constraint, center line, center line, apply this surface and that surface would touch next when tight, apply. Center line, center line, apply that surface. Sometimes you gotta watch, zoom careful and zoom in. Or spin slowly, zoom in. Yep, apply. Notice I went back and double checked that it was doing what I thought before I actually hit apply. Center line, apply that surface to that surface. 
apply cancel. Looks all good there. We need a bolt in the back here yet. Place number 14, the machine screw. Yep. One of those is all I need. Hit escape G to rotate close. Escape constraint center line to center line apply. And it's a little bit trickier. This cap screw goes all the way in this recessed or counter bore hole. So it's actually this surface up inside there. Click on that. To that one, apply, cancel. And there's that bolt tucked away neatly out of the way. And that is how you put the arbor press together. Okay. If something comes up, didn't cover something you need specifically, um, please ask. I can come around and still help you, but otherwise go on to the next video to see actually how we pull it all apart after you've now put it together. Okay, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.